Today is a really, really, really important and big topic. And it's extremely, extremely important and extremely, extremely big. And I know last week we had a great showing, actually. But this week is really important. Um, Today's topic is how to completely eliminate fear and failure from your life. And this is so critical, so important. For the last seven years, I've been teaching people how to, very simply, how to overcome fear. That was like one of the biggest things I talked about. I truly believe that fear of failure, rejection, what people think about you in the unknown is what holds people back from achieving what they want, right? In anything that they do in their life. Um, But what I realized during the pandemic has completely changed the game. And that's that it's not about overcoming fear. I discovered, and I'm just going to be real with you with that. What's up, Brittany Peterson? I've discovered, and I'm going to share this, and it's been time, but I need to share. I've been discovered a way to simply eliminate fear from your life. The number one thing that holds most people back from achieving what they want is allowing past failures. Listen to me closely. Allowing past failures and fear to sabotage future success. The number one problem, okay, we've, we've, been co- we've coached hundreds of people. I've spoken with tens of thousands of people. The number one problem, and I've been very blessed to work with a company that helped me find this. The number one problem that people have that holds them back is they allow past failures and fear to sabotage future f- success by making people feel unworthy. Okay, that's the number one problem that people have. And over the last few years, and specifically over the past year and a half, I have discovered a very simple way to completely eliminate fear and failure from your life so you don't sabotage future success. Okay, like completely. It's going to give you massive amounts of confidence. Okay, massive amounts of confidence. Um, I'm going to share with you how it works, who's it for, what it looks like, and then, of course, how to plan and execute it is the most important, right? And this is, this is something I've been holding back. I've been wanting to do for a little while, but I wanted to do it right. I wanted to do it the right way. And um, recently, I've been working with a company that's been working with me and helping me with a lot of things and, and packaging things, and, and this is it. So I'm sharing something with you very, very special today. Glad all of you are here today. Um, shoot a comment too. comment at me guys. Like I want to hear from you as far as like, Hey, Hey, let me know you're here. Number one, number two. Um, if you have questions, chat them in the box. Like that's what this is about. Chat them in the box. (laughs) Okay. Please do that. All right. So here we go. Here we go. Here is how I discovered this playbook. I think it's very important to understand how I actually discovered this. Okay. So over the past year and a half, as some of you know, in March of 2020, Corona came in. And, um, as if you do know, or you don't know, uh, I've spent the last seven years speaking around the country with, uh, at schools, at colleges like Clemson and UConn and Penn state, Ole Miss and companies like IBM. Um, And in March of 2020, everything was shut down. And during that time, obviously, all my speaking engagements were either canceled or rescheduled to be determined, okay? And so I also owned fitness facilities, and um, that was shut down. And I came to a realization that, like, I never want to be in this situation ever again. Like, obviously, it was scary as hell. Uh, And I never want to be in that situation. And so I started from scratch. And this time... I wanted to really build a team. I wanted to build a powerful, powerful team because uh, I, I always, I did always have one person or two people that worked with me or on my team, but it was never a real, real team. And so that was kind of my thing is let's build a team where we can make a massive impact and spread this message in more of a, a group or one-on-one setting versus me just speaking on stages. And I'd speak on stages and people would be like, hey, I want more. I want more. How do I get more of this? And I never really had more. And so that brought the birth of Relentless University, which is a place where we do talks like this, um, where I can hear from you, where we do our group coaching sessions, 
and where we have all of the courses, all the pre-recordings and everything like that. So there's no, uh, no excuses. And then, you know, a lot of people were like, hey, I want more one-on-one -on -one support. I want more accountability. And so we built in accountability into this process. And over the past year, as I was building this team, I created accidentally an accountability process for my team. And what I realized is after I created that process and we had been doing it for six, seven, eight months, I realized that that's the exact same thing that I did when I was at Ole Miss and, and earned a scholarship. That was the exact same thing I did when I wrote a book after I failed fifth grade because I couldn't read and write that became a bestseller, right? It was the same process. And so, um, so I, what I did is I took this process and I took it into two different companies and both companies exploded when they implemented this process. We took this process and we implemented it across the line with all of our clients and all of our clients started getting serious, serious results, like insane transformations uh, in their mind, their body, and also their wealth. And now we're finding in relationships. So, and I'm going to share that, how this all ties in. And I'm blown away. I'm absolutely blown away. I, I have always wanted to kind of come, uh, come up with a very simple process that I could share um, and take people to the next level because when I was on stages, it was just 45, 50 minutes an hour or sometimes a half-day workshop or whatever, and I never knew what they did after. And so now I have a chance to work with people in group sessions. My team works with people one-on-one, -on -one, and we take people to the next level and achieve things astronomical when in the past they allowed past failures and fear fear of rejection and failure and what people think about them and the unknown to sabotage future success. And so that's kind of how this came this uh, process came together. And then I took the time to really outline it. And so I have a spreadsheet for all of my team members and vendors that I work with that I hold accountable. And so it's engagement, it's accountability, but also, also in big term, it's performance. It's increasing human performance. And so one of my team members has been, is now the director of human performance. And so um, that's really what we do, right? It's leadership, it's performance, it's engagement, it's wellness. Um, it's pretty intense. I don't think there's anything like this. And so uh, we have a name for this playbook and it's the next play. And I'm going to share that with you here as we go along. But I do think it's important that you understand where this actually came from, right? Where this actually came from. So what is the playbook? What is this playbook? Okay. It's a series of steps. It's very simply a series of steps that anybody can do, anybody can do to completely eliminate fear, past failures, to give, to gain massive confidence so you don't sabotage future success, right? And this can come in health, this can come in wealth, and this can come in relationships, right? It's an accountability system. It's an engagement system. It's also a performance system, which is really important. Engagement, accountability, performance, and wellness system, right? It's pretty, it's, it, it covers a lot of ground, but it's super simple. And I'm going to share it super, super simple, all right? So here we go. Who is this playbook for? Who is this playbook for? This is for anyone, anyone who wants to improve their relationships, their health, or wealth. So let me give you some examples. Um, in wealth, for example, a business owner or a leader uh, that wants to improve others. You follow this process with your team, with, you know, uh, your colleagues, you follow this process as a leader and you can lift other people up or just yourself if you want to improve your own numbers, right? If you want to improve your own wealth, you just use this process. Fitness is the same thing. If you want to improve specific something specific for yourself, right? Body fat percentage, weight, right? How much muscle have you gained? And relationships, Right. If you want to improve your relationship and, and, and all transparency, I've did it. I've done it in all three. <laughs> I've done this in all three of them. It's crazy. It's, I'm telling you, this is insane. So um, 
if you want to improve your relationships with your spouse, with a friend, with a colleague, with your boss, with uh, team members like we talked about, with your kids, uh, it works across the board. And that's what makes this so incredible. That's what makes this so incredible. So how do you execute the playbook, right? We all want to know, okay, I get it. How, how do you execute this playbook? So let's walk through it. Okay. I'm going to walk, I'm going to walk, simply walk you through. I like to keep things super simple, but just because I'm, I'm, I'm not that smart. Um, but this is really, really simple. Okay. So let's jump right into it. Number one is you must have a code of honor in place first. Okay, so you must have a code of honor in place first before we can even jump into it. This only works if you have values defined, a code of honor written out, and expectations understood. Okay, now this can take time to put together. For example, me and my uh, and my spouse Rose, this took us time to put together. We're still putting it together as we go. Okay, but you must have those three things. And there's actually a whole course on code of honor. So if you want that, I highly suggest going and watching that. Okay, but again, number one, you must have values. You must have a code of honor and you must have expectations written out, right? And this could be for yourself, like if you're doing this with yourself, or this could be with your team, if you're doing it with your team or your colleagues or your kids or your family, right? It's all the same. You must have this. So again, the values, code of honor, and expectations can all be done through that course. You can see them all in that course. What's up, Brandon? How you doing, my friend? That can all be done in the course, all right? So you must have a code of honor. Number two, number two, you must have consistency. This does not work. This process, this playbook, this system does not work, okay? It does not work if you do not have consistency. Consistency is the name of the game okay and it must be done weekly it must be done weekly for example if you're doing this with your employees or you're doing this with your family if you're doing this with your kids if you're doing this with your team you have to do it consistently with every person it's one-on-one -on -one, right and if you need different managers and you have to create levels and all that i know there's some some people who have big companies right Everybody has to get met with one-on-one. -on -one. Like consistency is the name of the game and it must be weekly. It does not work any other way. We've tried it in other way, like other ways. It doesn't fall apart. It doesn't uh, work. Excuse me. I know my camera just froze there for a second. It will not work. So when you, when you miss weeks, employees will lose interest. Relationships will fall apart. Performance suffers. Like that's just the way it works. When you miss weeks, employees will lose interest, colleagues will lose interest, relationships will fall apart. How do I know this? Because it's happening, it's happened to mine. <laughs> I figured out very, very quickly that if you don't keep consistency, the relationship will fall apart, okay? What we do, and I, I haven't tested outside of this in all transparency, but we do one hour meetings every single week. So. Me and Rose meet for an hour as a family. I meet with every single team member for an hour, and they do this within the companies that I work with. And also the school, we're, we're doing this in one school district as well. Um, and, and it's crazy watching the culture and climate of, of that district change. So consistency. All right, so now you have these two things. You have your code of honor and you have consistency. Let's walk through the process, okay? Let's walk through this process. Number one, number one. The first thing you do, you're, you're in this one hour get together, right? It's engagement, it's accountability, it's, it's improving performance, it's leadership, right? The first step of the game plan is your KPIs. You have to discuss what happened last week. We wanna eliminate fear, uh, fear from your life. We wanna eliminate past failures from your life, right? We're not talking about overcoming them, we're talking about eliminating them. So in this one-on-one, -on -one, if you have to have it with yourself, that's fine. You should have accountability, coach. But in this one-on-one -on -one session, the first step is to discuss your KPIs. Those are your numbers, okay? That's where you are right now, right? You have to know where you are now. That could be your body fat percentage. That could be your weight. That could be your conversion rate if you're in sales. That could be your attendance if you're a school district, right? That could be, uh, if you're in a leadership role, your ret employee retention, 
right? If you're in a family role, this is where it gets in. How many dates did you go on? <laughs> How many nice things did you do for each other, right? So you have to know where you are. What are your numbers, right? You have to know where you are. Remember, we're trying to eliminate fear, eliminate failure. So you have to know where you are right now, right? This is the first thing that you do is you review the week before. What are your numbers? Where are you at right now? We can't create the future game plan without knowing where you are right now, right? Like it's just impossible to do. So this is the first thing that you do. This is so you learn from past mistakes. This is how you learn from things that did not work out the week before, right? Because we say there's no such thing as failure. There's only the next play, right? That's, that is what we do. That's how we eliminate it. But we can only eliminate it if you learn from it. You can't just eliminate it without learning from it, right? Because then you're just going to hit your head against the wall. So uh, there is no fear or failure. There's only the next play. But it's mandatory we learn from it. So you have to figure out what are your numbers. If you're, if you're in a family meeting, you know, what are your numbers? Like how many dates did you go on? How many did you go to school every day? Did you, you know, you have to have your KPIs for whatever. And these can be challenging to come up with. I, I have to say, Rose and I spent quite a bit of time coming up with these. But you have to come up with them. Uh, and it's just like the way it is. You've got to come up with what those numbers are. So your KPIs is where you are right now. Now, number two, all right, number two, the next thing is you have to go over the great, the good, and needs to get better. All right, there, there, there's the saying, the good, the bad, the ugly. I know, I know that's the saying, but w w we don't need to go over the good, the bad, the ugly. We need to go over the great, what happened great, the good, and what we need to get better on, okay? So we went over the numbers. This isn't a judgment. This isn't a failure. It's just something we went over, right? There's four questions, four questions you're going to ask. So if you have a pen and paper, I highly suggest writing these downs. Okay. So you're with your partner where you're with your, your colleague, your team member, your, your kid, whomever, right? You went through whatever numbers you came up with are important for them. Okay. The, the next step is to go over the great, good, and needs to get better. Here's the four questions. Really important. Listen to me closely on this. Number one, what went well? What went well this week? And what did you learn from it? What went well? What'd you learn from it? Right? That's important. Some people are like, let's just get better. Let's learn about the mistakes that we've had in the past. No, 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 no. What went well? What do we learn from it? We want to get better. We want to figure out what went well. How do we learn from it? So we keep doing that again. When you ask the question, what did you learn from it? It cements it up here. So you keep doing it. That's why we need to ask that question and verbalizing it. Verbalizing it is the, is the name of the game there. And then the second question is, what did not go well? What didn't go well? And why? Those are the four questions. What went well? What did you learn from it? What did not go well? And why? Why didn't that go well? And when you ask the question why, this is really important. When you ask the question why, it gives the person the ability to talk through it. Because 99% of the time, 99% of the time, they know why they didn't do it. They know what, what they can do to get better, right? We don't need to tell them. We don't need to tell them what they need to do. They know what they need to do. We just have to ask them, okay? We tell them what to do. It goes one ear and out the other. They tell themselves what to do. It's cold. It's very simple, right? It's very, very simple. Again, we're eliminating fear, eliminating past failures, right? So what did you do last week? Numbers, KPIs, okay? Now we're talking about uh, the good, the great and needs to get better again so we can continue to learn from what happened the week before so ultimately we can do this so we can create the game plan all right this is the next play so kpis questions what'd you learn from it now we create the game plan this is the easiest part this is the easiest part okay so i struggled this with with this with my team because my team would leave and i would say to them uh so what are you going to do what are you, so what are you going to do this week? What's your next play, right? What are you going to do this week? And they would tell me what they would do, and then we would leave the meeting, and uh, it wouldn't get done, and I would ask them, like, the next time we met, we would review, right? Like, you said you were going to do this. 
So how did it go? And they were like, oh, I didn't get it done. I didn't know how to do this or do this. So, so there's three steps to a game plan. There's three steps, all right? How many steps? Three. <laughs> Number one, uh, what are you going to do? It's the what, okay? What are you going to do? This is where I stopped, and this was the problem. So you, they, whoever you're meeting with, must, family member, spouse, kid, student, um, colleague, whomever, right? What are you going to do? The what? The second thing is how are you going to do it? The how. You must solidify that during your time together. It must be solidified. If they leave your get together, your game plan session, and they don't know what they're going to do, <laughs> then they're not going to do it. If they don't know how, what they're going to do and how they're going to do it, they're not going to do it. Okay? So the what, what are you going to do? The how, how are you going to do it? And then number three, when are you going to do it by? Well, I'll have that time done by the next time we meet. I'll have that done on Tuesday. I'll have it done on Thursday. Okay, perfect. Now you can hold them accountable to it. But you can't hold them accountable to it if you don't know what they're going to do and how they're going to, and they don't know how they're going to do it. Then they leave with confidence, ready to go. <laughs> I'm telling you, they're going to leave with confidence, ready to go. Like literally ready. All right. So, so that's, the, that's the game plan. And then you just rinse and repeat this guys. You just rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. Look, I've taught this to my team within multiple companies who have exploded, big companies. School district now, with all of our clients, there is no failure. Listen to me closely. There is no failure. There's only the next play. There is no fear. There's no fear of failure, fear of rejection, fear of what people think about you, and fear of the unknown. There's only the next play. And this is why my team has had so much success. Because even if they have a bad week, we review it. What did you learn? What's the next play? The next play is what are you going to do? How are you going to do it? And when are you going to do it by? There is no failure. There's only the next week. There is no failure. There's only the next play, right? We can completely eliminate fear and eliminate failure by just focusing on where we are. What did we learn? What's next? What are we going to do? How are we going to do it? And when are we going to do it by? It's that simple. When you realize that there is no failure, there's only the next play, you will completely free yourself. This will allow you to take responsibility for everything in your life. Unlock the handcuffs behind you. You take responsibility. Everything's in your control. And this is how you can excel and explode. This is how you see people go from struggling for five years to hitting big, built, crushing their wealth. This is see how you see people struggle with their weight for 20 years in a six-month period, completely change their life, and now they never struggle with weight again. This is how you see people who've had three failed marriages implement this process, and all of a sudden, they never have a big argument again. They might have a little hiccups, but never a big argument because, because, They've realized that they can eliminate their past failures. They can eliminate fear and, and feel worthy for success because there is no failure. There's only the next play. There's only the next play. You're never going to get, you're not always going to get a first down. You're not always going to get a touchdown. You're not always going to sink the three point, right? But what there is always is the next play. And that's for you. There's always the next play for you. So, of course, my challenge for you is to implement this process in one area of your life. I don't expect all of you to go crazy. What's up, Mohammed, Andres, Brandon Holton, Brittany Peterson, Kyle Fletcher, 
Samantha, Julie, Annette, Stephen, William, Martin. I don't expect you. I don't expect you to implement this in health and wealth and relation. You're gonna your your head's gonna spin. You're gonna go crazy, right? And within the next a uh, few days, we'll have this in a course with a PDF so you can download it and go through it. But my challenge for you is to plan and execute, execute this game plan. Choose. Are you going to do it with your wife? Are you going to do it with one of your team members to try it? Okay? To so try it. Are you going to do it with yourself? In your, or, or, excuse me, not in your, for yourself. In health. Health, wealth, relationships. Keep it sim- simple. Three areas. Don't go nuts. People, see, people get frozen by goals because goals are very hard to write down because you have to deal with failure, right? So that's why people don't write down goals, even though they know they have a 42% chance of achieving them if they write it down, right? So this unfreezes you. This gets you unstuck from dealing with goals because there is no failure. There's no fear. There's only the next play. So choose one area, health. Okay. So you're going to do it in health. We have health program. We have coaches. We'd be glad to do it. Do it yourself. Go for it. Wealth. Okay, same thing. You want to be held accountable to your conversion rate if you're in sales. You want to be held accountable to some sort of uh, leadership in some sort of leadership capacity. Great. We'd love to help you with that. Relationships. If you want to do that, if you want to do it with relationships, try this with your spouse. I'm telling you, it changes the game. I've never been in a more healthy relationship with my spouse since implementing this. It changed everything. Because we used to be really good. We'd have great conversations. And then over a few weeks, it would kind of fall apart. And it would get bad. And then we'd have to get it back together and it would fall apart. It was, it was too like this, right? So if your relationship's like that, execute this, okay? So here's the process. I'm going to make really sum it up for you, okay? Number one, you schedule something consistent. You schedule something consistent. I'm going to use spouse for an example, okay? You're going to meet with your spouse every, we meet every Sunday at noon. When Carmela takes a nap, we meet. Very simple, okay? We go over the week before. And you can come up with your own numbers, right? Did you go on a date? Did your daughter go to school a certain amount of days? Did you, whatever, right? Whatever your number is, you go over those, okay? Then you talk about the great, the good, and needs to get better. What went well, very simply, and what did you learn from it? What didn't go well and why? If you should, you should have those written down, okay? What didn't go well and why? And then you have your game plan, which is you each leave with what are you going to do? How are you going to do it? And when are you going to do it by? And then you rinse and repeat. You rinse and repeat. Okay? Now, let me just be very, very clear on this. Let me be very, very clear on this. Okay? You have to schedule this. This has to be scheduled or it does not work. It just doesn't work. That's just the way it is. Okay? And also, I mentioned this in the beginning. It's very important that you have to have a code of honor in place. A code of honor consists of your values. Okay? It consists of um, your your code of honor, your rules, and it also consists of um, your expectations. Now, if you don't have those, I highly suggest watching the co- the course in Relentless You, Code of Honor. You all have access to it. Go watch it. Go through that, okay? Now, your first couple meetings with your spouse, I'm just using this as an example. You can do it with your team. You can do it with your coach. doesn't matter. Um, with your spouse, is to set up those three things. Is to set, is decide what your what are your values, what is your code of honor, and what are your expectations for each other. Solidify that, and then from there you start rolling every week. What are the KPIs? Did we do the things we said we were going to do? What do we learn from it? And what are we going to do next? How are we going to do it? When are you going to do it by? You're going to watch your relationship explode in all areas. All areas of relationship are going to get better. It's 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 an amazing process. It's super super simple. I'm telling you, I'm sharing with you right now something I've discovered that's going to explode nationally. I truly believe that. Uh, the people that we're working with um, are uh, so on board with this process and know that it's changing people's lives left and right. So if you're not using it, you're missing out. Like You're really missing out. Like I really, really want to help in any way that I can to help you implement this process. Okay? Implement this process. So what are you going to do this week? You're going to take relentless action, right? You can't implement this without relentless action. This is relentless. It's not easy. I know it's not easy. This is challenging to do. This is very challenging. It takes time. It takes, oh, I have to take out one hour of my day. 
I just take out three or four hours of my week. I don't know how many people you're going to do it with. You're doing it with your spouse. It's one hour a week. It's one hour. It's nothing. But it does take relentless action to put this together. Okay? So if you have any questions, message me in Relentless You. Let me know or, or, or message one of your coaches. If it's Zach, if it's Erica, if it's Brady, if it's Luke, whoever, whoever is inside of the app, message them, talk to them about this. They know this like the back of their hand because they've been doing it for over a year and a half now. Okay, we're here to support you. We're here to help you. We, we want you to improve your wealth, your relationships, your health, and get to the next level. Transform, change, improve wherever you're at in your life. We are here for you. Okay, so this is the playbook process. Remember, there is no failure. We eliminated it. There is no fear of failure, fear of rejection, fear of what people think about you or fear of the unknown. There is none of that. We eliminated it. There's only the next play. When you eliminate fear and you eliminate fa failure and you believe it in your heart, okay? If you believe this in your heart, that you've eliminated fear and you eliminated failure, you will become an extremely powerful person. You will become worthy of success because you are worthy of success. And so there is no failure. There is no, uh, there is no failure. There is no fear. There's only the next play. So I hope you have an amazing week this week. Go out and crush it. It's your week. For a lot of you, I will see you all on Wednesday uh, for our group coaching session. Have an amazing week. We're always here. Message us. And I'll see you guys on Wednesday.